Hi folks, welcome to my Minecraft tutorial. This is episode number 34 in my How to Survive and Thrive series. And this is a sort of continuation of my underground living mini-series. And as you can see here, I am underground in my tutorial world. And I've got my farming systems here. I've got my tree farm, my uh, all compact, as you can see, compact wheat farm and bamboo and a little pasture area for, uh, for animals to spawn in on. And the reason behind all this is so that I can be self-sufficient while underground. I spend a lot of time down here doing mining and uh, hunting and so forth. And um, it's nice to have this these resources growing here so I don't have to return to the surface constantly. So the one thing I lack right now is a mushroom farm and that's what I'm going to build and I'll show you guys how to do it. Now before I get started on the actual construction I want to talk a little bit about mushrooms and uh, why we want to have a mushroom farm. Mushrooms are absolutely fantastic for um, healing but you have to make a stew and to do so we have a bowl, we have a red mushroom and a brown mushroom that makes a stew and the stew heals five hearts now the nice thing about uh, mushrooms as opposed to say a cooked pork chop is although the mushroom stew cannot be stacked the mushrooms can so we can carry um, up to 64 brown mushrooms and 64 red mushrooms and a single bowl and that bowl can be used for healing I'm not hurt right now but if I were I can eat that, get five up to five hearts back, and I still have the bowl. So I can heal, um, if I have 64 of each mushroom, I can heal 64 times with only three slots. Very convenient indeed. All right, with that knowledge, let's get started on our mushroom farm. Now, I've already picked out a little area right here. Um, you're going to need a space that's roughly nine wide and about 18 deep and five or six high. Okay, before I get started on the actual construction, I thought it might be helpful if you could see the finished product and what it's supposed to do and how it looks so that you'll have an idea in your mind's eye when I start digging into the walls. So we have a lane here for harvesting, a lane here for harvesting, and this is where the growth occurs. These are the source rows where we will plant our initial mushrooms and then they spread down here in the, um, in the collection areas, or the harvest rows. And you flip the switch, it activates a redstone um, a piston at the very end that releases water. And then everything gets popped up off the, uh, off the, the lane and delivered to me conveniently down here at the end. And when you're done, you flip the switch and the water stops flowing. And that's how it works. Very simple. All right, so now let's get started on building. What do you say? Let's go. Okay, so I've got my nine wide area, five high, and now we want to mark off the lane. So count in one, two, three, four, five from the left and just put a torch down. That way you know where you are. And we want a lane here that's three wide. And then this column here is going to be a seed row. So just do this. It'll make more sense once it starts to take shape. So these will be our delivery lanes, and this is going to go all the way back, about 18. So we'll just go ahead and clear this right out. We can take that out, too. I'm going to go right to the roof. Well, not the roof, but the ceiling. Okay, and now what we want to do is leave two blocks high on the ends. And again, that's going to be where we'll, we'll plant our initial mushrooms for seeding purposes. Okay, so right now, it should look like that. All right, we can go ahead and place our half slabs down here on the delivery lanes. One, two, three, one, two, three. And now comes the real manual labor, the bulk of the work, is we need to blast through these lanes all the way back. We're going to go back um, eight blocks and then we're going to go up a block and then back another six. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Um, I'm going to flash to the I'm going to flash forward so you don't have to watch the whole painful process of me mining. Just keep in mind you want to start with this block. And you can go right across here. You want to leave this one step. So I'll get you started and then you can have at 
and just dig backwards. I only went up five. Five should be sufficient. We may go up one more. We just want to be careful um, where the torches are placed. They can't be placed too closely to the mushrooms. Mushrooms will only grow in uh, light level 12 or lower. So if they're too close to the torches, they'll pop right out. All right, so let me get s finished here in these lanes, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my two lanes here started up. I've gone back eight blocks, and as you can see, it's starting to take shape and look like something. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put some mushrooms on here to make it look like something even better. Um, what you want to do is one seed row on this side, all one type. Put the browns over here. And then in the middle row, I'm going to stagger them. And this will give me the best chance of any kind of yield. See, the way mushrooms grow, they um, there's a chance that it will grow to one adjacent block, and it will go up or down one, um, one block level. And once they start growing down here, then there's a check that it might grow to the next adjacent block. It's a very slow process, and that's why we want to have all this space. The more space, the better. So the next step is to go up another block here, and then head back six blocks, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Job's done. All right, so the top lane is complete. It goes back six blocks. It's one high, and now we can go ahead and seed all the way back. And once again, we just want to separate the colors and then stagger these out a little, like so. Now, one of the other nice things about mushrooms is they grow on just about any surface, any opaque surface. So you can use cobble, you can use smooth stone, sandstone, whatever you want. Um, and again, the important thing is that you have some light to keep monsters at bay, but not so close to the mushrooms that they pop right off, and they will if it's too bright. All right, that done, let's move on to the next section. Okay, now we want to automate the harvesting because right now we have a working farm. This will grow mushrooms, but it's kind of a hassle for harvesting because you've got to come over here and punch them all to collect them. So what we want to do here is create a water flow, and the water will flow down. When you pour a bucket of water down, anyway, it'll flow down the lanes and collect all the mushrooms. It pops them right off, and they'll collect down at the end for you nice and tidy. And in order to get this to work, we just want to just blast right in here. Oh, hello. Sand trap. Gravel trap, rather. And let's dig that out of there, see how much gravel we have here. Ew. Let's block that off, shall we? Okay. So now we have... Oops. It's a little cockeyed. Much better. All right, so um, now what we're going to do is pour the water here. Although we need a little... You must go, my friend. We need something here to block the water so that it flows properly. And so we pour the water on this block right here. Let's light this up a tad. Get my water bucket. And why don't we throw some mushrooms down in the lanes so we can get a decent demonstration. Put them in the corners here, the tough to reach spots. Make sure this flow works properly. All right, get the bucket out. And you're gonna pour the water right here in the center block. And there she goes, harvesting as she goes down, down to the end. And we sit here, we collect. No fuss, no muss. Come to Papa. Now, that's um, all well and dandy, but it's going to be kind of a hassle to do this because you still have to go over here and pick up the flow, drop it, and so forth. So what we're going to do now is automate that with a little redstone and a piston. And so that all we have to do is flip a switch over there, and the flow will start automatically. 
Okay, we're going to need a sticky piston for this and a little bit of redstone. So let's go ahead and make our sticky piston first. I already have one made up, but if you don't know how to make one, let's do it right now. We need three planks across the top. We need a redstone here. We're going to need iron in the center and then around the edges simple old cobble. Take our piston out and then the piston goes back into the workbench and a slime ball on top and that makes a sticky piston. So we now have two sticky pistons. We only need one for this but um, well, you never know when you need an extra sticky piston. Um, we'll also need about 18 redstone and a lever and a couple of pieces of glass um, and some smooth stone. I think I have enough Oh, we have more here. Excellent. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do is run our line, redstone line. So let's get rid of some of this stuff in my hotbar and put the things we really need. All right, switch goes here, and we're going to have to blast through here. This is why we need more smooth stone so we can see, so we can replace this when we're done digging our floor to bits and pieces. So just go ahead and run that right back. Um, yeah, if I don't take this, we'll have some OCD flare up, so I better grab that. Thank you. And run the redstone to about there. Now we're going to have to get rid of this temporarily. Just go all the way back. I think we should have enough redstone to reach. We don't need a repeater here. We have just enough um, to activate our sticky piston. And then continue with the line all the way to the end. And the piston is going to go right down there. Let's recollect this. And now let's get our sticky piston out. And give that a test. Okay, we're going to want to place the sticky piston from the top. What we're going to do here is put our water. The sticky piston is going to be here. And the water is going to be back here. So, sticky piston down. Put the block on top. And when activated, it will raise up. Let's give that a try. Test, test, test. You must always test. And that should have risen. Yes, it did. And now we put our bucket of water right here. Oops. And that holds the flow back until we decide we want to flip to switchy. All right, so now let's cover all this up. Um, there's one more thing I like to do here just so I can see what's cooking. This is where the glass comes in. I th think I forgot to mention that you'll need two pieces of glass. And I put a piece of glass here. And... Oh! Ugh. Right. Like that. Okay. Now let's uh, fill in these gaps here. Close this up, otherwise the water's going to hit our circuit. It would have an explosion. No, not really, but... But it won't be pretty. Okay, so now it's time to test. Alright, well I've gone ahead and taken the liberty and planted a whole bunches of mushrooms for the test and let's do it. On three. One, two, five. No, three, sir. Right. Dun 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 dun. Water flows. Pops the mushrooms up. Pop 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 pop. Just like Jiffy Pop Popcorn. I stand here and collect said mushrooms as they flow down the collection lane. I don't break a sweat, I don't break a nail, works as advertised, and I'm happy. And that's pretty much it, folks. That is the semi-automatic harvesting mushroom farm. Click the switch, shut off the water, and you're good to go. I hope everybody enjoyed this, and if you did, please leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It's very much appreciated, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.